In Donald Trump's hush money trial, the former president criticized the daughter of Judge Juan Merchan, who works for Democratic candidates, prompting the judge to expand a gag order to include his family members and those of Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. Is the media criticism warranted? Trump isn't allowed to say that the judge's daughter is a Democrat consultant whose clients, the Biden campaign, Adam Schiff, are fundraising off Trump's indictment. This comes after Trump complained about what sure looks like an apparent uh, conflict of interest that the judge's daughter has. She's the president of something called Authentic Campaigns. That's a Democrat consulting firm. Everybody's using the term gag order, but I mean, that implies he can't say what he's feeling. This is about witnesses, it's about jurors, now it's about the judge's daughter. Put his behind in jail, because <laughs> that'll <laughs> shut him up. Mary Catherine. Uh... Trump posted this week, I should mention, a $175 million bond that had been slashed by the appeals court from nearly half a billion. So he has a history going after judges, going after prosecutors. We all know the examples. Is it out of bounds to go after a judge's adult daughter? Well, one, I think it might help him because he probably should keep his mouth shut and that would be legally beneficial uh, to him. <laughs> However, I think particularly the Bragg case is like nonsense on stilts and he should have the right to speak about how it is. So I would like him to have some leeway in that area. Honestly, like, it does seem like a bit of a conflict of interest that she's working it with these folks, but maybe there's a better way to communicate that, maybe not through your truth social, um, and to, to, to plant that story somewhere or have that discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, it does seem like he has pretty significant leeway to talk within the case without going after certain uh, outside characters. What does he get out of doing this, Kevin? Because he's not going to get Judge Merchon to recuse himself. He did win one delay. This thing is starting next week. Yep. Uh, so is there a strategy here? The, the strategy, if you're the former president, is to make sure that you are winning the public over, which is to say, make sure that your supporters understand that you've, you're being persecuted. Again, you talked about this earlier, Howard, this idea about they're coming after me, and by proxy, that means they're coming after you. He really loves this. And by the way, I find Find it rich. On the one hand, they're saying, well, don't blame the judge because his daughter is in this group that supports Democrats or takes lots of Democratic money. These are the very same people, Howie, that were out there saying that Justice Thomas should yes. be off the bench because of his wife's political affiliations and interests. Right. So it's sometimes preposterous. relatives matter, sometimes they don't exactly matter. Exactly right. But I would just say that, you know, uh, there are many professionals who can't control what their adult kids do. They may yeah. not even agree with them. But this is like the mirror image of the religion controversy. Trump supporters, especially in the media, see this as a blatantly partisan case by a Democratic prosecutor, even though it involves hush money payments to Stormy Daniels in 2016. And they say this certainly should not be a felony case. Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree with that criticism. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, here's the thing. The people running these cases, if indeed you do think this is the key to... Uh, saving democracy from this figure, maybe keep your nose clean, including of the appearance of impropriety, which is actually what I should have termed it earlier, yeah. not necessarily a conflict of interest, right. but something that appears to be. Uh, Fulton County, of course, and Fannie Willis suffer from the same issue on steroids. Uh, and perhaps, Trump's appealing that too, or exactly. non-disqualification. Exactly. Like, part of the process should be being as ethical as possible and removing all appearances of issues so that you can do this in the most ethical way possible. Yeah. But I'm not sure that's actually the motivation. But, you know, even with the gag order, Trump can attack the case. Yes. He can even attack the judge. But, you know, his media detractors, of which there are a few zillion, <laughs> uh, say, look, he falsified business records to reimburse his then lawyer, Michael Cohn, who will testify, who has also, you know, been convicted for lying, uh, for $130,000 to keep a porn star at the end of the campaign. Trump denies that there was ever any uh, uh, liaison between them. Yeah, he does. And, and look, Michael Cohen's convicted liar. Uh, so you believe or disbelieve his testimony as he comes back mm -hmm. and says, oh, I was paid this and I did that. This seems like well-trod ground to me. I'm surprised we're even having this conversation. It's all, eight years ago. Yeah, low yeah. as many years ago. And does it really matter? Does well, it get to the heart of what happened? And if it's a violation, I have always argued it's probably like a low-level campaign finance violation. Mm -hmm. It is not exactly. many felonies piled on top of each other or however right. Bragg has found a creative way to structure it. I just think that is a that is a specific use of the legal system to target this person. It's fairly obvious if you haven't used it before that that's what it's, is happening. Gee, we well, haven't seen that before. <laughs> I, I think there was a lot of um, dismissive coverage that certainly this is the least important of the four criminal cases. Yeah. But now it looks like it's the only one that will actually be completed before the election. Uh, and so I guess my question is, 
Is the press now going to, I mean, of course, it's going to get a monster amount of coverage, despite sure. no cameras in the courtroom. But is the press now going to say, oh, no, no, this is serious stuff because you got payments and uh, adult film actors. Yeah. I think the salacious nature of this yeah. particular case is what they're going to love. It'll be out there all summer long, and they'll want to contrast that with this, hi, I'm the president, reelect me, and look at our convention. But I have news for you. This summer, Howie, I'm making a prediction, is going to be raucous. A lot's going to happen at the conventions and so on. Cases like this will pale in comparison to what's coming down the pike. Right. So you're saying it's a sexy story, yeah. but not necessarily an important story exactly. and may eventually be overshadowed. Couldn't have said it better. Uh, I guess the only outstanding question, of course, is whether or not, uh, as he started to talk about, he gets sentenced to jail if he is convicted. Mary Catherine Ham, Kevin Cork, great to see you up next. The American media getting extremely tough on Israel after the tragic airstrikes that killed some of Jose Andres' humanitarian aid workers in Gaza. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.